Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Biola's Fall 2019 Commencement Ceremony, the last one of the decade. Please join us in welcoming our program participants and Biola's Board of Trustees. Faculty of Biola University. Welcome to Biola University graduating class of 2019.
Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2019. So welcome to Biola University's fall commencement. You may be seated. Thank you, Marlon Owen and the Symphony Orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the incredible Conservatory of Music faculty and students. Congratulations for another job welcoming us to this commencement ceremony. And it is on behalf of the Board of Trustees of Biola University that I welcome each of you. In the name of the Lord, we are so honored that you have joined us for this commencement service, and I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. So, there you go. Congratulations, graduates. This is um, a big night. Tonight you're going to be conferred with either a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. You've worked so hard to get to where you are, and I thank God that you came here to Biola, and I thank God that you're leaving. Um, <laughs> right. It's time. Yeah. Unless you're here for the MPAC program and you got another year left or graduate school, then please stay. But um, we, it's going to be a great night tonight. You'll receive your degrees, the diploma, an early Christmas gift for you, and graduates, you have made us proud. Each of you has an incredible story, a narrative of how your life has been woven together and the journey that you've been on. You've lived out that journey in some very unique ways. And my prayer is that God will use you as a faithful presence in this world. You've been strengthened in mind and character through your education here at Biola University, and we have been strengthened because of you. And I want you to know I represent a very grateful community for the years that you have invested in us. And our prayer for you is that your education, for many of you, the years that you've been here, I pray that you find this education as you look back in life to be this rich, valuable time when you were stretched and you grew and you developed and you were prepared for the fields of influence that await you. Yesterday, I walked through this gym. The chairs were set up, kind of touched all the chairs, not in a magical way, but you know, just like touched them and just kind of prayed over those chairs that you would be sitting in today. And I prayed that God would fill you with the love of Christ. I prayed that you would make an influence on this world for him. Pray that God would give you wisdom and favor and joy throughout your life, come what may. And there have been many that have been praying for you, and we won't stop. And I know that uh, part of those who have been supporting you and surrounding you are here today and celebrating the accomplishments of these graduates. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to some of you. I'm so I wonder if there are any parents in the house, moms or dads, where are you? Stand up. So perhaps there are some siblings here. Where are the brothers and sisters? Did any grandparents make it? There you are. And maybe there's some spouses, children, or grandchildren here, even. Where are you? So I want to acknowledge the many sacrifices that made this graduation day possible, the sacrifices that you made as family and friends of these graduates. You've entrusted them to us. And I pray that may tonight and the years to come be an affirmation of the worth of a Biola education. So we honor you this evening, celebrating with us. Thank you, and welcome here. If you're graduating tonight as the first generation in your family to receive a college degree, could you please stand so we can congratulate you, first-gen students.
We are so proud of you. Thank you so much, First Gen students. How about global students? Global students, stand up. Where are you? Tonight we, tonight we may have a few who are graduating who have served in our nation's armed forces and they are wearing a braided red, white, and blue cord to signify their service to our country. And if you are a graduate who served in the armed forces or is still, or maybe you are in the crowd who served in the armed forces or still does, stand up so we can say thank you for the ways you have defended our freedoms. Of course, we are so thankful for the brilliant and dedicated faculty members in each of our nine schools or at the heart and soul in so many ways of this institution. Students, you know them. These are the professors who invested in your lives over these past few years. And what a remarkable body of professors and mentors and scholars and practitioners and researchers we have. The preeminent faculty of Biola University, please stand so we can express our gratitude to you. Honor to be part of a community uh, with such remarkable faculty. And it's an honor to be part of a community with such a remarkable board of trustees, some of whom are here tonight. And we recognize the faithful service of our board, the governing body of this university, who gives so much of their energy and their time and their wisdom in so many ways to keep Biola University not only physically solvent, but also missionally faithful. So, Thank you, board members, and to vice presidents, deans, administrators, staff, thank you for the dedication, evident of which is found in these graduates that you are working for in so many ways to help them in their own journey. I'm honored and grateful to be part of this Biola community. A lot of work went in tonight, as you can imagine, from our amazing events teams transforming this gymnasium into this commencement arena, and I know day in and day out, this dedicated team of men and women from campus safety to biola facilities to events and others um, just did a great job. So let's express appreciation for them this evening as well. So this year, biola has many reasons to give thanks. Our enrollment of a little over 6,000 students continues to reflect the 111-year tradition of a biblically-centered, Christ-exalting, academically robust, compassion-oriented education with the expectation that our best days are yet to come, and they are, and they are for you as well. This confidence is reflected in the strong interest in a bioeducation around the country and across the globe, which is confirmed by so many that know about us from leaders to media and on and on, we hear about the good things people are saying about this university. And we receive that with humility, but it calls us to our best days ahead. We're in year two of our wonderful design award-winning Alton and Lydia Lim Center for Science, Technology, and Health. Some of the STEM graduates here today, this 91,000 square foot building of new science labs, classrooms, and equipment for our growing program in the sciences, including our new Stewart Honors Program. We have a major renovation underway of Bardwell Hall. It's right outside here, transforming this former science building into a state-of-the-art facility for students studying art and for faculty well as well. And it's going to be opening uh, this coming summer at the 50th anniversary of Biola's art program. Yeah, I'm telling you, things are happening. We're planning a new building for the School of Cinema and Media Arts, a stunning new home for our program, which has been ranked by Variety Magazine among the top 50 film schools in the world. And this fall, we opened up a new veteran center to serve our 130 student veterans and 140 students with military-affiliated families. And <laughs> it's 
so honored for those who made this possible. And as many of you know, this past summer, we moved from provisional status to full membership status in NCAA Division II for intercollegiate athletics. And we're adding men's and women's water polo coming up, putting our intercollegiate number of sports teams to 18. And uh, what a start we had with our men's cross country team, year one being conference championships. Um, winning that, going on to national. So congratulations, Eagles. Uh, way to go, way to run hard. And it's uh, just the beginning of, I think, a, a long and very fruitful relationship we will have with the NCAA. You students graduating today have demonstrated graciousness, kindness, leadership, ability, skills, wisdom in so many ways. I've watched how you have volunteered in the community. I've watched how you've been involved in global missions projects and service projects across Los Angeles and Southern California. I've watched how you've led in academics, in art, in music, in science, in theater, in journalism, in research, and more. But above all, this year we've upheld one new more year our time-honored commitment to the love of Christ, to the truth of God's word, and to the renewing work of the spirit in and through this community. So in that spirit, please stand and join us for the invocation and remain standing for our Christmas evening hymn. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have given us, this day of celebration, this day of honoring the hard work and achievement of these men and women graduating tonight. Whether they are graduating a semester early, a semester late, or right on time, we know that you have purpose in this timing. Lord, we are grateful for the unique work you are doing in each of their lives grateful for friendships made, life lessons learned, and for your faithfulness to be with them through it all. As they plan their way, may they find peace in knowing that you are the one who has established their steps. Father, there is none like you. Thank you for this time of year as we remember your great love for us in sending your son Jesus, our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Bless our time together here before you. May you be honored. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing and join me in tonight's hymn. You will find the words printed in your bulletin or up here on the screen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy. may be seated. Our scripture tonight comes from 1 Peter 2 and 3. 
But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits us. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It is my privilege to introduce our fall 2019 commencement speaker, the Vice Chair of Biola University's Board of Trustees, Mr. Michael Maples. For those of you who are graduating from Kroll School or interested in vocations in business or commerce, Mike Maples' story combines both inspiration and integration. He's an inspiration of what clear vision and hard work can do. And in his work, he draws from an integration of his degree in business administration and his degree in theology. He started his career as a youth pastor in the Bay Area and then with his business partner, Greg Nelson, a Biola dad. Mike Maples founded Truemark Companies. Over the decades, Truemark has emerged as a leading development firm that creates value by turning underutilized land into desirable residential and mixed-use communities and neighborhoods. As a managing partner at Truemark, Mike Maples is known for his discerning foresight, his problem-solving skills, strong ethical compass, and deep appreciation and respect for his team members. He's passionate about building enduring and sustainable communities. As co-owners, Mike and Greg have led Truemark companies to become one of the nation's most recognized builder. For 31 years, Truemark has been constructing master plan communities, homes, and commercial buildings. And last year, his company was recognized by Professional Builder Magazine, one of the largest and most renowned home building publications, as Builder of the Year. A hallmark of Mike's commitment to stewardship is reflected in this statement. Truemark sees every piece of land as a sacred responsibility to fulfill its mission. And that mission is to enhance the lives of people by creating inspiring living communities. Mike holds a degree in business administration from San Jose State University. And from there, he went on to receive a Master's of Divinity degree from Bethel Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. These two degrees reflect so much of what so many have come to see in Mike Maples, a commitment to scripture, a pastor heart, a vision for what can be, a perseverance when the road is tough, and a philosophy of business that is grounded in good theology. And Mike loves Jesus. Above and beyond his day job, as a leader in property development and an influential voice in business, Mike has served on the boards of organizations like Hume Lake Christian Camps and The Gathering. And for nearly a decade, he has been a wise and winsome member and now vice chair of Biola University's governing body, the Board of Trustees. With his wife, Jeannie, the Maples are generous Biola encouragers and supporters, and they are proud Biola parents with three of their four children having sat where you sit now today, graduates. Now those three of the four are Biola alumni, and one went to APU, is that right? <laughs> three out of four. <laughs> Love APU, by the way. Mike, uh, thank you for saying yes to this invitation to be our speaker tonight. I know how incredibly busy you are 
But um, I pray, and we all pray, that your words leave a true mark on these graduates, class of 2019. Please join me in welcoming Mike Maples, our winter commencement speaker. Thank you, Dr. Corey. And to you, the graduating class of 2019, you're entering an unprecedented time in history with the greatest time of change imaginable. You're part of the largest, most educated, most balanced generation in America's history. Now, I'm a baby boomer. You have no idea how hard it was for me just to admit that you're better than my generation. <laughs> we were the biggest, the be-all generation. We were going to and did change the world as our large demographic bubble aged its way through every stage of life. And then the Gen X group came along, and they were just nothing in our wake. And it was all right in the world, and then your generation showed up. <laughs> your generation is bigger numerically. You're more educated. You're more balanced in your live-work priorities. Although I have to say, when you take a generation like mine with a dysfunctional workaholic, uh, desperate need for achievement, we did get a lot done. And don't respect my boomer generation because we still represent 41.6% of consumer spending, so you need us. <laughs> we're going to live longer than any other generation before us, so we're going to be around for a long time as well. Our bodies might outlast our brains, outlast our brains, so someone from your generation should figure out how to make the working brain last as long as the working body, or you're going to have a couple decades of people like me not recognizing who you are and unknowingly repeating things again and again, and you might find that a little unpleasant. You will live in a different world, a world where you will get up and get in your driverless car to drive to the teleport where you will commute in your pilotless drone and fly and land near your LEED certified building, and just before you enter the express elevator that chooses the floor for you by retina scanning your eyes, you will stop and get a cup of coffee because addiction will be with you always. <laughs> As you exit the elevator, you will enter into a space that is filled with natural light and with soothing yet invigorating organic, non-allergenic fragrances that refresh the soul. You will oversee an office filled not with people, but with a group of computers and robots that were improving all night long through the use of artificial intelligence. Think of that, a group of robots and computers and no people. I love the people I work with at work, but sometimes I think, man, it'd be nicer to manage a group of computers. Think about it, no complaints, no misunderstandings, no hurt feelings. I would program the robots to greet me every morning with things like, Mike, is that a new shirt? You're looking good today. Or, hey, look at that haircut. They did a lot with that limited resource. Or, you've been working out, you look a little bit thinner. By the way, those are all things you can no longer say in the workplace, or HR will drag you into their office. But <laughs> these are computers and robots, so it would be okay. We are in a world of accelerated technological advances that is resulting in unpredictable disruptions that creates opportunities to change the way people live, work, shop, vacation, interact, connect, and even find meaning, and you'll be at the forefront of all of this. Your generation will take the DNA mapping of my generation and use it to cure untold number of diseases. Your generation will solve the homeless problem of 60,000 people living tonight on the streets of Los Angeles. Your generation will leave the planet in better shape than it is today. Many of you will find yourselves in the headlines of your industry news feeds with your great successes and your contributions in your fields. But greatness is not always measured in headlines. It's often measured in the quiet conversation with a friend, with showing up in someone's most painful moment in life, with being dependable, or as Eugene Peterson writes, long obedience in the same direction. Achievement is fantastic, but it cannot be the only goal, and it certainly isn't the only measure. Achievement never becomes a satisfying well of fulfillment that it mysteriously offers us. You know, some would say that your generation and the church have lost its moral and spiritual foundation and that it looks hopeless in the future. And I say God has always stirred in the hearts of young people and raised up some to stand in the gap and lead the Christian community forward. 
I believe that your generation will raise up pastors and teachers and youth pastors and worship leaders that will inspire believers and non-believers to embrace the gospel. You may do church different than other generations, but your generation will find meaningful, authentic faith as they live out the gospel. I believe that about your generation. During your lifetime, so much will change. It'll be exciting, it'll be thrilling, it'll be amazing, but at times it'll be unsettling and ethically confusing and even scary sometimes. But in the midst of all this enormous change, there's one thing that will never change, it is this. We are broken people who walk among broken people who need Jesus. That will not change. Behind every stream of perfect moments on Instagram are real people whose lives are not filled with the moments we envy on their posts. You are not the first generation to feel jealously and competitiveness towards your peers, but you're the first generation who's had it thrown in their face 24 hours a day. It's led to the highest level of anxiety among college students in decades. It's led to the misperception that it's normal to create a billion-dollar company by the time you're 29, and if you haven't, really, what are you doing with your life? It's been admitted the impression that those around them are living a perfect life. Meanwhile, we are painfully aware that ours is far from perfect. The good news is that God is not just the God of the perfect post, but the God of the most discouraging moments we would never want posted. When the move to New York to pursue your dreams becomes nights of loneliness and doubt instead of success and thrills. When the person of your dreams turns out and says that you're not the person of their dreams, when unexpected cancer enters into your family. Oh, in our worst moments, God shows up and reaches out with his unconditional love and forgiveness in our career failure, in our relationship failures, even in our moral failures. First Peter is one of my favorite books in the Bible because I relate to the context in which it has all taken place. It was written by Peter, who knew both the joy of following Christ and the embarrassment of failing Christ. It was written late in his life when persecution and misunderstanding of the church had become much common in the day, just like it is in our day. It was written to non-Jews who had never seen Jesus, but had come to faith in Jesus and loved Jesus. He reminds them and us that we should live as strangers in this world with the tension of living appropriately in a culture that is often in conflict with our values and our beliefs And to do this without being shaped or controlled by the culture that we are just passing through. Then in chapter 2, he calls them to live a life they probably never had anticipated they would live. And he helps them see themselves as they probably had never thought was possible. He tells them they should be part of the royal priesthood who ministers amongst the non-believers. Think about it. It was written to ordinary people. They were non-Jewish. They hadn't ever seen Jewish. They didn't even have a biola biblical education. They were just regular old people, and all along, Peter comes and says they were being called to this high position of priesthood. They probably thought, I'm just an ordinary person doing my tech job, you know, like everybody else. How am I to be elevated to such a high position as priest? And then he writes, but you are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood, calling them to this new level, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare his praises for the one who called you out of darkness and into wonderful life. Light. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Live such good lives among the pagans that they see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. He helps them see that they have a sacred calling to live as priests in the parish of the non believers. We have the privilege of taking our sacred calling as priests into everyday work environment that gives us a natural influence where most ordained priests would never be allowed access, into our places of work and our places of influence. We're part of a royal priesthood, all of us. He would say to the graduating class in December 2019 that you're not just business majors and STEM majors and education majors and humanities majors, but that you are part of a royal priesthood called to the parish of the pagans of the non-believers. After business school, I had earned my master's of divinity and was ordained and worked in churches, and I loved it. Then through a series of events, we felt called to plant a new church, and we had to make a living. Because we had four kids under the age of three and a half, 
and they wanted to eat every single week. Just so demanding. So we, hey, my friend and I started a business, and for me, the lights began to flash, and I felt this high calling to live out my faith as a priest amongst the pagans, the non-believers in the business world. The calling to be a priest among the non-believers feels equally as sacred to me as my calling and ordination to the ministry of the church. I have loved both. Both have been a high and sacred calling. You should walk into your future place of work as a priest. A priest is one whose responsibility is to help connect people with God. A Latin word for priest actually means bridge builder. And what kind of priest should you be? You should be one who understands mercy. Peter uses this phrase, God's mercy, quite a few times in the letter. It's interesting because in each case, he probably could have used other powerful descriptors like God's love or God's grace, but he uses the term God's mercy. You see, mercy is for anyone who has not measured up, who has deeply hurt people they love, who has done something in a moment of weakness they will regret for a lifetime. Oh, Peter loved mercy. It's not getting the punishment you do deserve. It's compassion towards someone who is helpless in their situation. Your actions say that you deserve to be left out or punished or looked down upon or forgotten or ignored or despised, but mercy is not getting what you deserve. Oh, Peter loved the powerful word mercy because he had been a recipient of mercy. When you've received mercy, you are a qualified priest because you realize that you're just a broken person walking among other broken people all in the need of mercy. Receiving mercy changes everything. It brings hope, refreshment, cleansing. Oh, we're all broken people. We've all rebelled in different ways. Our expression of rebellion may be less offensive and it may have less earthly consequences than the non-believers who be called to serve and work beside, but it puts us in the same place, the desperate need of the mercy of Jesus. Mercy will help you see people differently. You know, we are called to be light in darkness, hope in despair, and grace in injustice. So leave this place and live out your dreams and your ambitions, but never forget the high calling to be a priest amongst the non-believers. That we are broken people walking among broken people who need the hope that comes from the amazing mercy of Jesus. Graduating class of 2019, may the Lord be with you on your life's journey. Congratulations. Mike Maples, thank you for your call to all of us. I love that idea. We are called to be priests in the parish of those who don't believe. Let's express our appreciation one more time to Mr. Mike Maples. At this point, we're going to pivot our commencement ceremony toward the conferral of degrees. And making a few statements is Mr. Wayne Lowell, the chair of the board of trustees at Biola University. And after Mr. Lowell's comments, we'll hear from Dr. Deborah Taylor, our provost and senior vice president. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Wayne Lowell. I, too, want to thank Mike uh, for that, uh, those comments. And uh, I hope you remember a number of them and take them to heart, because we are called to serve uh, wherever God puts us. It's not always convenient, but he puts us where he intends us. The mission of Biola University is biblically centered education, scholarship, and service equipping men and women in mind and character to impact the world for our Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful for you, these committed Christian students who came to Biola for that reason. It is now a distinct privilege for us to present you these diplomas to those of you who have finished your courses and have demonstrated sustained intellectual growth, and the Christian commitment. Graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we congratulate you and pray God's best for each of you as you seek to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ 
in the days and years to come. In tonight's ceremony, we are honoring our students, both graduate and undergraduate, receiving their degrees from the Kroll School of Business, the School of Education, the School of Fine Arts and Communication, and the School of Science, Technology, and Health. Good job. You guys do win the award for being a little more enthusiastic than this afternoon's ceremony. <laughs> um, so our school's deans will be coming forward. They'll ask you to stand by the groups according to your degrees, and then I'll present to you to the president for the conferral of those degrees. And then graduates, you'll proceed to the platform. Your name will be announced by a faculty member from your discipline, and then you'll be handed your diploma. So to each of you who are graduating, it's such a great joy for us tonight to celebrate you. We recognize the significant achievement that this represents. You've worked so hard to develop intellectually, spiritually, and personally, and we are so proud of you. So we pray that you go forth with what you have learned to shine like lights in the universe for the Lord Jesus Christ. Congratulations. The deans will now come forward and present you for your degrees. Will the candidates for post-baccalaureate and baccalaureate degrees in the Kroll School of Business please rise. <laughs> These students have earned their degrees to impact the business marketplace for Christ, practicing business and management as their calling and their ministry. This is what we refer to as business as ministry. As you go out from this place, equipped as servant leaders in your careers, we commission you with the countercultural words of Jesus, saying, whoever wants to become great among you must first become your servant, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Congratulations to the graduates and to their families. Please be seated. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate and post-baccalaureate degrees in the School of Education please rise. The vision of the School of Education is to equip a generation of influential educators who are focused on God's calling, utilizing their strengths, gifts, and scholarship to meet the needs of diverse students and to advance the kingdom of God. Graduates, you are the fulfillment of that vision. May God bless you as you serve in public, private, mission, and home schools here and around the world. God bless you. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degrees in the School of Fine Arts and Communication Please stand. <laughs> graduates, graduates, you have been a part of a community of artists, scholars, and communicators committed to developing young men and women who will explore truth and beauty and express what it means to reflect the image of Christ. As such, I give you this charge. Through the power of the Spirit of God, whose love creates and sustains all good work, it's our prayer that you will fulfill the vision of the School of Fine Arts and Communication to rigorously engage, confidently lead, and humbly serve society in seeking the reconciliation of all creation to the Creator. May the Lord bless you and continue to guide you as you start this next chapter of your next story. Congratulations to the graduates. May be seated.
Will the candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the School of Science, Technology, and Health please rise? I encourage you to remember our school vision, to equip a new generation of ethically thoughtful profession, professionals in the sciences and healthcare who are grounded in a Christian worldview, educated in an academically rigorous environment, ready to assume positions of leadership, and able to provide the clear moral vision the world desperately needs. You are ready. Go now in the power of the Holy Spirit and fulfill this vision. Congratulations on your wonderful achievement. May God richly bless you as you impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. All right, time for all the candidates to rise. President Corey, on behalf of the faculty of Biola University, it is an honor to present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all the requirements of their respective degrees. And so it is by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in the state of California, I confer upon you Graduates of Biola University, your respective degrees with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, you have now graduated. Undergraduates, you move your tassel, the class of 2019. Graduates, you may be seated, and now as we prepare to present the diplomas, we will hear Biola student Allison Mills, uh, whom my wife Paula and I were with last month in China as she performed. Allison will be accompanied by Michaela Lum on piano and the Biola Symphony Orchestra.
from the Kroll School of Business, graduating with a Master of Business Administration, Edwin Aguilar. <laughs> Kelly Arginal. <laughs> Amanda Bechet. <laughs> David Chur Che. <laughs> Christina Galicia. <laughs> Eli Malfo. Jeremy Millar. <laughs> Alex Much. <laughs> Alvin Su. <laughs> Clarissa Tenosadibio. <laughs> Ruben Alonzo Viacres Jr. <laughs> Chris Wong. <laughs> Sandy Wu. <laughs> Joshua Johan. Graduating with a Master's of Professional Accountancy, Samuel James LeBlanc. <laughs> Trevor Michael Pence. <laughs> Caleb Nathaniel Short. Maris Elizabeth Thompson. Graduating with a Master of Management, Nonprofit Organizations, Danny Rowe. <laughs> Carly Sprigg. Michelle Van Riper. Graduating with a bachelor's in accountancy, Cameron Michael Hobbs. He's graduating summa cum laude. Stephen James Johnson. Graduating summa cum laude, Caleb M. Neal. Rebecca Kapahani Rival. <laughs> Evelyn Reynoso. <laughs> Edelia Rodriguez. <laughs> and graduating Kuma Samlade, Andrew John Strom. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from the Kroll School of Business. Wilson Wen Gao. Jarrett Carpenter. Jennifer Michelle Chandra. Hansel T. Chow. Hunter Finnegan. Matthew Thomas Garza. KJ Galtera. Graduating summa cum laude, Devin Donette Gooch. <laughs> Riley Perry Grant. Graduating summa cum laude, Lauren Elizabeth Handlin. Austin Lloyd Herman. Brian Kevin Kreit. Aditya Samuel Lal. Graduating summa cum laude, Zachary D. Martin. Mallory Renee McCauley. Serena Celine Ortiz. Jordan Danielle Pearson. Graduating summa cum laude, Ryan Lauritz Peterson. Edgar Ramos, Jr. Salvador Tony Rangel III. Zachary William Rebune. Vanessa Rivas. Olivia Joy Sapp. Daniel Muan Shen. Jessica Jovi Silvina. Nicholas Jisu Chun. Madeline Wangsa Wijawa. Janice S. Yi. 
Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Business Management from the Kroll School of Business, Holly Baker. Kyle J. Dendy. Valerie Padilla. Hanuel Shin. Danielle Watson. No? Graduating with Master of Arts in Education, Haley Michelle Darian. Alexandra Nicole Domino. Allison Ray Rosales Gomez. Michelle Lynn McNeff. Serena Monique Napier. Wanda J. Sabaya. Grace Choa. Graduating with a Master of Arts in Teaching, Samantha Collette. Sandra Deming. Arali Gonzalez. Seth Daniel Hines. Jane Jaeon Kim. Marie J. Kim. Gloria Kwan. Carrie Suzanne Rodriguez. Graduating with a Master of Science in Curriculum, Instruction, and Publication, Catherine Rose Harper. Graduating with a Master of Science in Special Education, Sarah Marie Foxworthy. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies, Elementary Education, Megan Ashley Adams. Madison Day Bernier. Graduating with a double major in Liberal Studies, Elementary Education, and Spanish, Chelsea Bryant Hassler. Karina K. Carlson. Maggie Chung. Megan Chung. Caroline Paige Cushman. Victoria Duarte. Casey Lynn Jacob. Justin Jung. Graduating summa cum laude, Emily Susan Kearney. Lindsay Claire Larson. Michaela Patricia McCoon. Lauren Catherine McHugh. Graduating summa cum laude, Irene Yolanda Urbano. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies Multidisciplinary, Dulce Isabel Altimirano. Graduating summa cum laude, Mackenzie Ann Brandt. Leslie De Quiros. Janet Kang. McKenna Kelly. Sophie Ray Matt. Caitlin, oh, oh sorry, uh, graduating summa cum laude, Alyssa Stephanie Patterson. Angelina Marie Tulang. Brooke Nicole Watts. From the School of Fine Arts and Communication, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies, Sydney Mary Bruckner. 
Hannah Louise Griffin. Jonathan David Jesu Dawson. Graduating summa cum laude, Maxwell Hughes Claber. Chak He Lo. Sayri Angela Park. Kaylee Joy Seville. Kaylee Spencer. Serena William. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and Integrated Media, Christopher James Baeza. Caitlin Ashley Gaines. Emily Noel Law. Madison Seiferth. Pierce Singy. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Music, Maxime Stephen Killick. <laughs> Ellery Rose Sablan. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Public Relations, Isabella Marie Burchette. <laughs> Angelique Alexis Calvillo. Kelsey Laura Carlson. Anna Marie Craig. Graduating summa cum laude, Lauren Christine Haringa. Amy Elizabeth Jones. Megan Noel Jones. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and a Bachelor of Arts in Public Relations, Mariam Meged Lewis. <laughs> Irene Pan. <laughs> Keely Petlon Schiappa. <laughs> Samantha Brooke Sands. <laughs> Madison. Janae Steiner. Gabrielle Shannon Verbarg. Hannah Vitko. Grace Kelly Yu. Graduating summa cum laude, Taylor Marie Zerby. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Theater, Lexi Pash. Aliza Grace Schlusser. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and Studio Arts, Christy Deborah Huang. Sarah Marie Nordstrom and Dean. Brandon Taylor Stedman. Graduating with a Bachelor of Music in Music Education, summa cum laude, Kara Marie Makos. Evan Moses Williams. Graduating with a degree in Music and Music Performance, Joshua Nielsen Burke. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Design, Ariana Aolani Fuyumuro. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Music and Worship, James Andrew Fryer. <laughs> Brenna Joy Ginter. Graduating with the Bachelor of Science in Studio Arts, Rochelle Rivier Grizard. Rachel Nanshan Ji. 
Anna Mary Wilson. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in biochemistry, Claire Marie Sproul. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in biological science, Jocelyn Mercedes Huang. Inmo Jonathan Kang. Hazel Mencia Saya. Graduating cum laude, Emily K. Neighbors. Marissa Ashley Peterson. Crystal Ann Robinson. Justin Tan. Graduating, uh, graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, the Michelle A. Menkel. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Communication Sciences and Disorders, Ariana Amaya Banda. Sierra Blaze Bowder. Marissa Lynn Clymer. Sabrina Cruz LeCap. Caitlin A. Macedo. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Hannah Elise Carson. Josiah Thomas Manning. Jillian Elise McDaniel. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Human Biology, Jessica Ashley Carlson. <laughs> Haley Renee Haas. Jasmine Julia Herrera. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology, Kylie Catherine Allen. Delaney K. Brunet. Stephen Kuo. Mackenzie Ray Martin. Amy Nicole McKeever. Frederick Wyatt Miranda. Grace Kyoko Mori. Christian Perez Basulto. Sarah Kate Singleton. Simon Santa Anna. Justine Maureen Zarati. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Brandon Giovanni Oriana. Graduating with a Master Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Katie Bozal. Ruth Alexandra Brieka. Brica, Rebecca Branch, Madison Elena Brown, Yamili Raquel Burgos, Grace Choi, Karis Gina Christensen, Abigail Ruth Coriel, Amina Adache, Alexa Ewing, Brick Danielle Fedick, Desiree Flores, Janelle Garcia. Sophia Grace. Sean Michael Harms. 
<laughs> Angelica Hernandez. Lisa In Hong. Liha Rika Shia. Sarah Margaret Klinsman. Carly Ann La Liberty. Elsha May Landis. Aisha Lockett. Kayla Joy Lundy. Alondra Pena. Graduating summa cum laude, Priscilla Hue May Pua. Hannah Kwan. Tiffany Rankenberger. Emily Elizabeth Rice. Graduating summa cum laude, Crystal Rodriguez. Bethany Shubin. Carly Simons. Maria Taylor. Mariah, sorry, Mariah Taylor. Sabrina Thomas. Victoria Madeline Tyler. Emily Laura Williams. Brooke Wilson. Teddy Wright. Lily Shu. Madison Paige Zimmerman. Graduating with a degree, Bachelor of Science in Physical Education, Ryan Scott Thompson. Graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Physics, Joel Kashif Stock. time for the class of 2019. So Biola graduates, you've reached this milestone in your educational journey. I'm sure it's been a journey that's been both exhausting and exhilarating. It's a journey to, that's taken you to no doubt new heights and maybe even some new depths. It's a journey that has made you question and struggle in ways you might not have anticipated, but it is a journey that is now over. It's done. So as you depart from here, you'll be joining a community of Biola alumni who are making a difference around the world for the good for the cause of Christ. And I trust Biola has impressed upon you that you must take the challenges of our world seriously. You must be a light where there is darkness and a hope where there is despair, as our commencement speaker shared with us this evening. I ask you to be a steward of kindness in a world of hostility. I hope you understand what it means to be what the prophet Isaiah calls a repairer of the breach, a repairer of broken walls, whatever those walls are. I charge you graduates to be ambassadors of Christ, upholding the biblical truths of integrity and sacrifice and justice and compassion. I challenge you to live selflessly. I challenge you not to define yourself in terms of what you do or the impact you make or what your legacy might be. I challenge you to define yourself in Christ, and it is in his name that I commission you now to go in the name of the one who was born in a manger, died on a cross, 
risen from the dead and will one day come again. Graduating class, would you please stand? So as I give you this charge, I simply want you to hear, to hear you say, to respond to my charge with simply the words, we will. So graduates of Bible University, class of 2019, as God has called you, will you commit to being a light to the world? Yeah. Right. And to uh, you <laughs> surrounding these graduates, this company of witnesses, the throngs of supporters and family and friends and guests celebrating with them tonight, I'd like to ask you another question. And to that question, I'd like you to follow my charge by also saying the words we will. So to those of you who have supported these students in their journey, I ask you, will you join me in praying for and encouraging those you know in this class of 2019 as they graduate from Biola University tonight? Yeah. Uh, Biola University graduates, it's time to go now. Not just to your celebrations, but it's time to go when the spirit of the one who called you disciple to a world that needs you, the love you embody, the grace you radiate, the mercy that you live out, the convictions you bear, the courage you'll muster, the wisdom, the knowledge that you possess. Go now to the next leg of your journey with the hope and knowledge that indeed to live is Christ. Now I invite all of us to join the graduates in standing as we receive the benediction which will be given by Biola University trustee, Mr. Brad Cole. Would you join me by bowing your head in prayer? Almighty God, everlasting Father, King above all kings, ruler of heaven and earth, we acknowledge your power and sovereignty over all that has gone on here this evening and over these past years leading to this culmination tonight. We ask that the same power and trust in your sovereignty and wisdom and grace that brought us here tonight would be evident in the lives of these graduates for the decades to come and that their lives would impact many for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the students you gave us for this short time. They are loved by many here tonight. Work in their lives, protect them from the enemy, give them safety through the, your powerful presence in their lives. Remind them of your presence always, in each and every way and every day. Remind them of your constant abiding love. We would ask that every gift and talent and passion given by you would grow, develop and flourish for their good and most of all for your glory. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray all these things, amen. We'd ask that you be seated for the recessional, and when it's complete, uh, you'll be excused. Thank you.